Imposter syndrome. We've probably all heard of the term before, or maybe we've even felt it ourselves. But what is it? Well, imposter syndrome can be defined as a collection of feelings of inadequacy that persist despite evident success. Imposters suffer from chronic self-doubt and a sense of intellectual fraudulence that override any feelings of success or external proof of their competence. Basically, imposter syndrome is a feeling. It's the made up belief that we're not quite good enough and that we might not belong in a certain role or environment. It's the feeling that everyone else around us knows exactly what they're doing and is 10 times better at it than we are, which is just total bullshit. And the other crazy thing is that some of the world's greatest minds experience imposter syndrome. I mean, Maya Angelou once said, I have written 11 books, but each time I think, uh oh, they're going to find me out. I've run a game on everybody and they're going to find me out. And even Albert Einstein, like Albert goddamn Einstein, he also experienced imposter syndrome. He once confided to a friend, the exaggerated esteem in which my life work is held makes me very ill at ease. I feel compelled to think of myself as an involuntary swindler. So, you know, if old Al and Maya also experience imposter syndrome, then you can rest assured that you're not alone. It's hard. And I think especially for women in the music industry, because like, you know, especially if you're a woman who plays like an instrument or produces or something, like it's usually been a very male dominated section of the music industry. Even with like my guitar playing, like, I think that's the thing that I always kind of like not stress about, but like that I'm aware of, I guess. Um, and I, I'm lucky because like I'm surrounded by like the boys in my band who just like uplift me all the time, which is like obviously so great for me. But like, I think, yeah, that's an important part of it. Like you have to surround yourself with people who are going to be uplifting and like not make you feel like you're less than what you are. I think the my self-doubt drifts in from, you know, when because the music industry is so terrible in every way for people listening to music. A lot of people won't listen to things that you send them. They'll just, you know, they'll be like, hey, listen to this, and it'll go for three minutes, 30. And you will see them the next, you know, in a week later and be like, hey, listen to that track. And you're like, ah, sorry, I didn't. It's like, but it just happens all the time. And that's where, for me, a lot of self-doubt creeps in. It's like, shit, no one even wants to hear it. The first uh, time we went to WA, our first album had just been released and we walked into Amplifier Bar in uh, Perth there and our drummer turned to my manager and said, why are all these people here? And he's like, Be they're here to see you. And he's like, no, they're not. He's like, yeah. He's like, what? And then just playing on stage, we were playing across the other side of the country, which seemed like forever to get to for us. And, you know, we're playing to a stage like you know, 600 people in a room and we're just like, how did we fly across this far and people still know who we are? That first album would record it and it took like a year for it to come out because no one wanted to release it. We kept writing and writing during that time and we were pretty down on ourselves because we were like, oh, obviously no one, we're not very good because no one will release our album. Once it, that picked up and we we're playing, we were like, we had all these songs in the bank. So we went into the studio and we just recorded again. And then all of a sudden we were able to release another album like pretty much to the day of a, of a year. So we had, you know, a fairly large body of work very quickly to be able to tour with, which was really, um, yeah, beneficial for us because we could spend just time playing and writing and, you know, we didn't have to worry about day jobs pretty much after the first album was released. People find it really hard to financially support themselves from being a creative so they constantly have to fight for like their opportunities and they have to fight for like approval usually from like not even like just family members but society going like if you aren't sustaining yourself financially on the wage that you are given as like a musician an artist of like a dancer then like are you a professional dancer or are you not a professional dancer I think it takes so much courage to decide for yourself that you want to be something that is like not the norm and that is going to take a lot of hard work and it might never happen but you love the thing so much and you believe in yourself and in what you can achieve in that industry that it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter if you can't financially support yourself fully on that one thing when you're being told to create something that's exactly like someone else like because that will reward algorithms 
like that will reward you in the algorithms it's like you've got to kind of like weigh up all like your integrity and like like your creative direction that you want to achieve and align that with like i don't know maybe something that is like um more mainstream because like that's what people want to hear and it's like it's so hard to kind of strike that balance i think and i find that side of things really hard sometimes because like i'll write a song and i'll be like really stoked with it and then like you know i'll show it to someone who is like i don't know a part of the industry in a bigger way and it's like oh yeah like that's that's cool but like i'm like this is really like what i want to do and then i'll show them something that is like maybe i think is like pretty average and they will like be obsessed but i'm just like it's so yeah it's so funny to dwell on things of course you want that affirmation again you want to release an album and everyone says it's the best thing in the world but it's not going to happen it's never going to happen not everyone's going to like you it doesn't matter that's how i've gotten out of that mentality of you know i don't belong here it's like yeah I, I, maybe I, I do belong here but everyone's like version of imposter syndrome is like quite isolated to like them and their experiences but i guess in my experience like especially when it comes to being like a person who identifies as a woman in the music industry you are everything that anyone can be if not more because you've had to really fight for like your position, like not only in the music industry or creative industry, but also being viewed in the way that you want to in society. You have to just create very supportive um, networks and very supportive communities that will all, who will always like ensure that you feel uplifted and like you should do the same for other people. Like be, be what you want to see in the music industry and I guess in the world and yeah ensure you're being that same support and that like same positive like being for someone that you want like for yourself I guess. So now that we've kind of talked about imposter syndrome I feel it is super important to end this on a positive note and give you guys some tips on how you can kind of overcome it and work through it. Let's just talk about it more. So the first thing I want to start off with is that feeling incompetent and being incompetent are two completely different things. You know, if you're in a certain role or you're in a certain position, it's because you actually do deserve to be there. Don't ever devalue your success. So if you ever catch yourself or someone else saying like, oh yeah, you know, I, I probably only got the gig because they couldn't find anyone else. The thing is that they wouldn't have called you or they wouldn't have thought about you if they didn't think that you could do it. So why are you the one that's stopping your own opportunities? So that leads me to my second tip, and that is when you're doing something, do it for yourself. If you're creating art or you're creating music, make sure that the person you're creating it for is you. Make sure that it is something that is close to your heart and that you're passionate about and that it makes you happy. Because ultimately, when you release that to the world, that feeling of vulnerability isn't going to feel as bad because you're not gonna really be caring too much about what other people think because you, you just know that you made yourself happy doing it. So my third point is that no one ever stops learning. If you find yourself looking around a room and you feel like everyone might be slightly better than you, use that as an opportunity to learn and to grow your skills. Go out, make mistakes, that's how we learn. And don't ever feel like all your successes amount to one mistake. The fourth and probably most important thing that I could say is that if you are feeling like an imposter, talk about it. Go up to your friends, go up to your mentors, talk to people about it. And when you do talk about it, you'll realize that, hey, okay, like some of these things are actually just in my head. I can do this and I am good at what I do. Ultimately, imposter syndrome sucks, but it just shows that you're passionate and that you give a damn. So keep on keeping on and good luck. <laughs>